Hi, welcome to this Power BI tutorial. This is we're going to see how we can view the difference in the mean. Uh, this is the idea, the average mean uh, with other data points and data samples. So what do I mean by that? Um, well, in Excel, uh, actually I've got an Excel document here, just to explain the purpose here, here's some data and I'll make this data available for you uh, on link down below. And uh, the idea is, uh, you'll know the average here. So say, for instance, we want to know the uh, company name. So we've got the company name here. Do we have the unique function just yet? Uh, okay, so let me just... So uh, we've got um, company name here. And then over here, we want the actual mean um, total. So this is what is a little bit more difficult when it comes to Power BI. Because in this one, we would just type in the average, wouldn't we, here? And then we wouldn't have the mean of, say, the total. Yep, that's great. Uh, so that's the mean of that total there. It doesn't matter where I drag that, it's always going to be the same. Then to be able to calculate the mean of this, we're going to have to apply some sort of filter. If we do it in pivot tables, it will do it automatically. If you're um, um, doing it in a formula like this, you might use something like average if. Um, and then you would type in the formula there, like equals average if. Um, there we go. And then you would choose the range. And if it meets this one here, then sum or average this one here. Close off the brackets. I hope that got that right. So there's the average. And then finally, what you would do is you would have to calculate the difference. And then that would be one minus the other. That's good. So basically it would be equals and I take uh, this point here and take away this point here press enter and you can see that this is two thousand pounds over the average and if I hop and copy that one down and just uh, give it a look so I think you can agree that this is a nice way of doing it but the problem is in Power BI when we bring this data in and try to filter it it will automatically start filtering according to um, uh, these different company names here so what do I mean by that? Well, let's do go to Power BI. Uh, what I'm just going to do for the time being, before we bring this data in, I'm just going to convert this to a table, format as table. If you're not already done so, then please see the other videos about formatting as a table here. Then at the top, uh, I'm going to call this one fact sales because it's a fact table. Uh, this is already saving. That's good. Um, great. So let's close down at Excel. Swap back to Power BI here. Now, if you want to get data, uh, what you can do is you can click on the Get Data button. Oops, there it is, just here. And I'm going to go to Excel. Uh, so it's the Excel data I'm interested in. Uh, here's my Excel data here. So I'm just going to open that one up. And that'll bring the data across. Uh, when the data, this is the table. So click on the table. That's fine. I'm going to click on Load. I'm just going to bring the data straight in. Okay. Takes its time, doesn't it? Right, so there we go. Uh, if I just get rid of myself and then just zoom in here so you can see, um, in fact, I've got uh, on this point here, you can see over on the right-hand side, oops, uh, clear that. So on the right-hand side here, I've got various company names, etc., cetera, dates sold, various fields that are available. So yeah, it's all ready to go. So the first thing I want to show you is how to create a measures table. That's why I always do that to create uh, my measures. And so I go to home and then enter data just in here. Okay, and there's my measures table. And then down here, what I would do is just give it a name. So I would call this one my measures. There we go. We're going to click on load. And then the table's loaded up. And there we can see my measures table here. In fact, if I just get rid of myself just again here, I can just zoom in and you can see the table there. If I just expand it, you can see I've got one column. Don't get rid of that yet because if you do remove it, it will delete the whole table and you have to put it back again and it creates a duplicate and it's a bit of a hassle. So don't do it yet. What I want you to do is I'm going to right click on my measures and go to new measure just here. And then I come up to the top here, where's the measures there, ready to start typing. And I'm going to just call this one the average, or actually I'm going to call this one the total mean. So instead of using the word average, I can use the actual Greek character. Now, it just so happens, if I just zoom out here again, that I have a Greek character set as a character map in Windows. So if I do character 
map, here we go, give that a click. So here's my character map here, and then what I need to do is just find the mean. So I've made a little note on my phone here, so, uh, so 0, 0, B5. So let's just zoom in here, and then in the Unicode character, 0, 0, B5. Notice there's a keyboard shortcut as well I can use, and you see there I can get that little uh, character that comes up here, the micro sign, I suppose. Um, I think that's the one there, isn't it? It's this one here. So uh, yeah, so that's Alt 0181. Okay, so if you had a keypad, I don't have a keypad because I'm using a laptop, then you can type that one in there. But that's the one I'm interested in. Let me select that one and copy it. I swap back to Power BI, and then I'm just going to paste that in. And then equals, and then this one's just a standard average, basically. So total average, okay. Um, and then I'm just going to look at the fact sales and it's the total here, press enter, and it will give me the total average there. So this is just a standard, okay, which means it's automatically going to be filtered. So what I mean, do I mean is it's a standard, it's automatically going to be filtered. Really, really to demonstrate this, we're going to just drag a few things to the actual page here. So if I drag, say, company name across, oops, let's just see, make sure I've got company name, there we go, and it goes in, it automatically selects a table. Uh, let me just make this a little wider here. There we go. So now if I drag my new total measure across, my total measure, here we go. Let's got that one there. There we go. Just drag that across here. Then you see it's automatically separating it into the companies. Can you see that one there? So if I just zoom in and show you. So you see the total mean is automatically separated to show the average of Acme, the average of amp guitars, etc., to show the average. But what I want to do is show the difference or see the difference between this number, the 12,476, and all of these other numbers here. So hopefully make uh, sense there. I want to see the difference that's between uh, these numbers here, these individual numbers here, and this particular number just here. Okie dokie. So let's see if we can solve that problem. All right, so to be able to do this, we're going to need another measure. So I'm just going to right click on my measures just here. I'm going to go to new measure. And then um, up here, let's just type what we need for the measure. So this one is going to be the total. Hopefully I've got the little uh, mean sign on the Greek sign there. In the, yes, I have. And I'm going to put all in brackets. And that's the key to this one. So what I'm going to do is here type in the word average. And now I can't just write all like this, which is a bit of a pain, because if I say all, it's looking for a table or column name. Um, so if I said, for instance, let's have a look at fact, sales, total, and then go back. You see I get a, um, an argument, uh, a problem here. It says only accepts a column name of this. I can type in total, uh, I suppose, of all the total. Let's have a look here. But um, if I go click at the end, I still get that same issue here. So I can't use average. But what I can use, if I just delete just up here, and we'll just give that again a go again, shall we? So if I took average x, so the average x, basically, this x part of the formula um, just here, this will iterate or it will loop through every row within the table I dict well, start looping through rows in the table that I've got just here. Okay, so what I would do here is I would type in the table name. Now I could just type fact sales, like so. So we're going to do that. If I type fact sales and then do the expression because I want to find the average of the total. Um, in fact, if I want to be explicit, I can be fact sales here and I can type in total and press enter. And great, I'm not getting er an, an error, an error, which is good. So if I go back now and if I find this one here, here's my total all. So I'm going to click on that, hold my mouse button down. Oh, click on that, hold my mouse button down and drag it across. Hopefully I can drag it to this bit here. Uh, there we go. So because if I just zoom back here, there we go. Okay, so because um, you see this, for instance, is, n is still filtering because it's actually going through the X and it's going through each one. It's, but it's literally doing the same job as the average, as you can see there. Just see my <laughs> so it's doing the same job as the average. So what we need to do is we just need to add a little function around the first argument in average X so that the calculation looks at all of the rows. And it happens to be all. In fact, let's just do that right now, shall we? So if I just zoom in, 
click just before the F in fact sales and we're going to type in all and then make sure I close off my brackets just here that's good and press enter then you can see this is updated here so no longer is it now filtering they call this the evaluation context here so basically this one's filtering by evaluation context because it's looking at Acme and working out the um, the, well the total actually for this one here um, this is the average by the total average here but this one doesn't really matter where I place this it's always going to bring back the same result excellent so last but not least what do we need to do well we need to create a difference let's make a difference <laughs> so uh, let's do that over here on the right hand side let's get rid of me so um, I should be able to right click on this column now and delete it that was uh, easier than we did before wasn't it uh, let's right click and make a new measure there we go so there's our new measure here at the top so let's zoom in here right so uh, this is going to be the difference from the average which I've just copied and pasted and basically what I do now is I just take the first um, say the um, the total which is off that particular one in the evaluation context or whatever I drag out it's going to take that one, take away, and then the total all. And that's it, really. I should make these all pounds and pence, but let's see if we can just bring that back in. So if I now go in and just drag the difference, and I can drag it up and then just let go, and now I can start seeing differences, yeah? So I can see, in fact, let me just drag this, uh, where is it here, just so it's just up a little bit, just wedge it between the two. There we go, so it's between company name and total. So now I can see, the difference from that is positive yeah this one's positive this one's negative excellent so now I've got this one here I can start plotting this in a nice way just move this over here on the right hand side here I can use maybe a bar chart on the right hand side so if I go to the right here and let's just find the bar chart which is this one here that seems good let's move this one up over here a bit there we go that's it so that's good so what I can do now is I can find a bar chart let's have a look here where can I uh, what do I need to drag in here so uh, for the values I'm going to do my difference so I'll drag that into the values here and then the company name I'll drag into axis just here let's have a look and see what I've got there yeah that's starting to look good let's sort of sort that by company name um, there we go that's brilliant so it's making it brilliant so we can see the ones that are negative and we can see the ones that are positive as well. Um, one last thing, we can do something called conditional formatting on this as well to make sure that the negatives are probably red and the positives are, are green, I suppose. So if I go down and, and go into um, format here, uh, and then if I go to my, I never remember what this one is here, is under uh, data colors here, and then click on this little, no, no, it's always, I think it's changing this upper, this new version here. And then if I click on, this down drop down list here I can go to conditional formatting and then in the conditional formatting window I might have to zoom back so you can see that one here I can show my face again as well what I'm going to do here is I'm going to choose rules okay from the list here so I'll choose rules and then I will then go to my measures and choose the difference and then I can start a, a mucking around with this so if it's from if I delete this and press, press tab you see it says minimum uh, number and then less than zero then it's going to be red and then I'm going to add a new rule if it's greater than zero the number and is less than uh, I suppose if I just delete that and tab the maximum then it will be green or I can go to custom color here and click on a green here so let's just say so if it's greater than or equal to the minimum number but less than zero it will be red if it's greater than or equal to zero uh, and less than whatever the maximum it will be green yeah that looks makes, makes sense so I'm going to let me just zoom back let me just click on OK and now we can see the difference there so there we have it so it's nice to see the difference um, <laughs> making a difference as well so just in a nutshell we need to use that average X formula that's what I've got over here and um, just um, zoom in so that's the average X formula that we're using just here so this average X loops for each one and then the key to this one is this all that we need to use. Okie dokie. So if you haven't already done so, then please subscribe. Click on that subscribe button. It would be very much appreciated. If you can't see it, I'm just going to move it up there uh, as well. So you should be able to do that. Please 
um, if you subscribe, you'll see the other videos coming up. So I've got one. Um, we are going to use that for standard deviation. So we can look at that. So that's one to come up. And then we're going to use that to create our, um, uh, our Z codes, basically our Z indexes, so that we'll be able to create a bell curve. Um, so we'll be able to do that and then get other data integrating with that bell curve. So if you haven't subscribed already, please do so. Give this a thumbs up if you've got anything out of that, out of this um, tutorial. Just one more thing to say. Thank you so much for watching.